Hey, phone size users. So I want to show you a couple of different steps that you can undertake to enhance your email follow up from your phone sites funnel. So the first one that I'm going to show you is we're going to navigate over to the config tab for your site. So right now I'm showing you um, this is the, the follow up tab, of course, where you should be setting up your follow up uh, messaging from your phone sites funnel. But what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go over here to this other tab that I have open for where I have the config screen opened up and I'm going to scroll down to what's called the email settings section here. So you might not have really paid much attention to this before, but uh, in case you didn't know, you have the ability to adjust the from name and from email that's associated with whatever follow up message you have sending out from your funnel, right? So back over here into the config tab. Um, let's say that uh, I wanted to adjust this to be just like my first name or something like that, right? Um, I could do that. Now, what's displayed here initially is this is going to be the, the default name and email on your account, but you can adjust this. Maybe you're the business owner and you're setting up different sites for different um, sales reps on your team or maybe for clients or something like that. You can go in and adjust who this email follow up should be coming from. Maybe it's like from a virtual assistant or something like that. So. Let's just go ahead and change this just to give you an example here. And we'll go through the funnel here and see how this shows up in my inbox. So let's go ahead and select save config. And then let's just go ahead and check this out from my awesome fake demo funnel. All right. And while we're waiting for that to appear in my inbox, I'm just going to go back to this page here really quickly. That way we can use this here. Uh, for a, a, the, the next enhancement that I want to show you. Okay, so let's go back to my inbox and here's my uh, email that just came through. So notice that it's saying that it came from Margo and it came from Margo at mobilefunnels.co, right? So that's fine. That's how I wanted that to look. That's why I set it up this way. So someone, uh, some lead gets this notification, <clears throat> then they're going to think, okay, then this is like the sales rep that I just uh, filled out this funnel for, right? And then they would just go ahead and reply back. Now, something I want to show you really quickly is, um, much like other autoresponders or, or follow-up mechanisms out there in the marketplace, uh, it's going to show that it was mailed by or signed by someone else's uh, email server, right? So um, the next adjustment that I want to show you is we're going to mitigate this in case you don't want it to show up that it's being sent by phone sites-email.com. Uh, now, honestly, it's probably not that big of a deal. Most people aren't really going to pay attention to this. This is kind of uh, common for uh, you know email marketing anyways for this to, to show up as some email that was sent via uh, you know, some third party, right? I mean, if you're using like SendGrid or MailChimp or you know, Amazon, uh, what is it? Amazon SES, uh, their email service, um, it, it's going to have where it shows that it's being sent by someone else. So it's really not that big of a deal, but we can mask that. We can have it uh, actually have your email go through your email server. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and delete this really quickly. I don't need that now as our lead notification. Let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, now let's go over to our config tab once again. Let's make another adjustment. So this one's a little bit more tricky. Um, I'm going to go into custom SMTP right here. And I'm going to toggle this on. And so now for this adjustment, this is where we're going to set it up where your email follow-up is going to go through your, your server. Uh, what you're going to need to know is you need to find out what your SMTP host and SMTP port are for your email. Uh, so for example, so I'm using G Suite uh, for G Suite and also the free version of Gmail. Um, that's going to be SMTP host is going to be SMTP dot gmail.com and the port is going to be 465 okay now I'm going to give you a table that you can check out and I will provide the link to this for you in the post that I make in the group associated with this video but you can also do a, a quick Google search too you could search for like uh, iCloud SMTP settings uh, or I, iCloud SMTP uh, server and port or whatever whatever makes the most sense you could you could if you know that like your outlook you could you could search for outlook and then smtp port or smtp host and then go find whatever search results are going to find 
something similar to what you're seeing right here in this video with this little table with this column of SMTP settings because these are the values that you need. So like if you had Office 365 as your email, this is the server that you'd put over here under SMTP host. And this would be the port that you'd put under SMTP port. But in this case, uh, I've already ordained what I need for G Suite. And now the next step is I need to put in my email username, which in this case is gonna be my G Suite email or my G Suite account. And then for the next step here under SMTP password, and let me just, let me just make this a little bit bigger for you guys to be able to see here in the video. I'll just pause a second so you can catch up. So there was the SMTP host, SMTP port that I just uh, entered in, which again is from that, that table that I was showing you here. And I entered in my G Suite email address, right? So now the next step is I need to enter in SMTP password. Now, in the case of G Suite and Google, this is not gonna be my email password. We need to create a separate password for this. Now, I can't tell you what it's gonna be if you're using iCloud, Outlook, Office 365, or uh, something else for your email delivery, um, simply because I don't have email through any of those other services. I'm not quite sure what you need to do. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of research into that on your own. But for SMTP password for Google, uh, so for Gmail and G Suite, let's go walk through the process of creating that now. So I'm gonna go back over to my Gmail account and I'm gonna click into, up at the top up here, there's this like little badge from my Google account. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into Google account and then click on Google account here. And then on the far left, I'm gonna click into security. And then under the security page, and if you want, if you wanted to just type this out, it's the URL, which is, I guess, kind of hard to read is uh, myaccount.google.com forward slash security. But on this page here, on the security page for my account, uh, under the section called signing into Google, I need to make sure that two-step verification is turned on. In my case, I have it turned on. And even if you weren't setting up this um, for your follow-up, you'd still want to have this on just for the security of your, your Gmail to begin with. But anyways, you need to have this turned on to have the next section appear. Um, you won't be able to use this next section if this is turned off for two-step verification. So at passwords, that's the section we want to set up for our SMTP password back over here in phone sites. So let's go ahead and set this up. So under Google account, I'm gonna click into at passwords under signing into Google. And Google's gonna make me authenticate here, so let's just do that. I just need to use uh, use LastPass, so I'm gonna log in that way. Okay, so now on this screen here, uh, I need to select, select app, and in this case, it's mail, and then select device. Now, honestly, um, none of these up here matter because we're not selecting an actual device that we're going to be logging into. We're going to be logging into an app, right? So we're going to go ahead and select other, and I'll just call it uh, phone sites. And you can call it whatever you want. You could call it you know, like phone sites uh, and then give it the day's date or you know, PS and today's date or whatever you want, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and select generate. Now. Here's the password that Google has created for me. So I don't have the ability to create my own. They, they create it for me. Um, but what I want to stress here is that you'll probably want to save this password somewhere. So like if you're using LastPass, uh, you have the ability to, to save a password like this in LastPass. Um, if you're uh, less secure about this, you could always write it down and save it somewhere that hopefully someone doesn't get to. But um, I want, I want you to understand that you need to save this because once I click on done here, I can't get back to this password. Uh, Google does not give me the ability to get back to it. So there's, there's no way to like click into this and get back into that password. The only thing I can really do is 
delete it and then create another password, which is really not that big of a deal. Just more of a pain if I've already used that password elsewhere and then I have to go back and remember to, to update that password if I accidentally get rid of it here. Okay, so I've got that password. Um, I'm, I copied it. I'm going to go into phone sites here and I'm going to paste that password right in here. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and select save. And so we're going to go ahead and test this. So I don't want to bother Druby, so I'm just going to go ahead and change this to me. And then let's go ahead and send this on over. And so I should have two emails now over in my inbox. I should have a test email and I should have this app password created. So this password uh, created notification email. Um, well, that was sent through just a couple minutes ago. It, I saw it pop up while, we, while I was talking, but uh, whenever I set up this password over here, uh, Google sent me over this app password created. Just to let me know. So I'm, I, I don't need this. I can go ahead and delete it. Now here's my test email that I just sent from phone sites from this button right here, right? So if we open this up, I can show you it no longer says that it was sent via phone sites email.com. Right? I don't see that anywhere. I have no idea that this has anything to do with phone sites, right? Okay, so that's probably what you're looking to do if you're following along with the, the last room, uh, few steps here in this video. Is you want to try to hide the, the phone sites aspect. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, I'm always in the habit of, of saving things here, but what I wanted to do is I'm going to go ahead and change this back to me. Um, I want to test this from the funnel itself. And the reason being is that uh, you should always get in the habit of testing your funnel out completely before you either publish it on Facebook in a post or in an ad or in some other social media application other than Facebook. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and test this out. I don't know why I refreshed the page. I really didn't need to refresh it. Um, let's see here. Okay, and then let's go ahead and select let's go. And so now I would expect over here in my uh, inbox here we've got our message that came through and it was sent from Chris and as you can see here it makes no mention whatsoever of phone sites that's pretty simple all you really need to do is you just need to use this table here to find your SMTP settings for your server and your port and add that over here and then figure out what you need to do for your password if it's Google uh, if it's you know G Suite or, or Gmail just got to set it up via the app passwords page. Let me just go back here really quickly so I can show you where that was again. It's under security under app passwords. Just need to set that up and then input that password in over here. But if you're using something like iCloud um, or Outlook, uh, you're on your own. You're going to do a little bit of research into that. All right, guys, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.